Good morning to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time talking about Tropical Storm Cristobal, or whatever it is. We'll just call it Chris. Uh, I am in Gulfport, Mississippi. Kind of tired. Got a few hours of sleep last night. Uh, ready to get up and get going today and set out more cameras and the two weather stations here along the Gulf Coast. And in anticipation of that tropical storm that begins with C. Uh, here it is from the 8 a.m. Eastern Time Intermediate Advisory, 7 a.m. Central. Winds up to 50 miles per hour now, mainly away from the center, very uh, east side weighted, as they say. Pressure down to 992, so the air pressure definitely falling, and it's moving due north roughly at 12 miles per hour. Look at that yellow area of interest to the north and east of Bermuda, which is right there. There's Bermuda. This area is uh, possibly going to try to develop some over the next several days. Only a 20% chance, though. It's along a cold front, and therefore it's not necessarily your typical genesis area, like when we get these very strong tropical waves that come off Africa and move their way west. These are more prone to developing than these cold frontal systems. Nevertheless, it might provide some rainfall for Bermuda, and high seas out in this area uh, of the open subtropical Atlantic. Other than that, Cristobal has us busy enough, nothing else going on for the time being. All right, infrared satellite imagery, courtesy of the Weather Nerds site. And you can clearly see it's got this sort of hook shape to it. Uh, it looks like a big old candy cane or something. It's lopsided, dry air wrapping around on this side of it overall. Uh, the convection or the upward motion and thunderstorm activity located on the east side. And it is trying to wrap a little bit there, though, on the northwest side. Structurally speaking, at least from a infrared perspective, it is not particularly healthy looking, which is typical for June. All right, very important. This is typical for June. Not unusual to see something like this. In fact, it's Fairly well organized for June, to be honest with you, because you usually don't get June hurricanes. But if we look at it from the visible satellite perspective, this is the loop that's loading now, this tells a, a better story of what we're looking at in terms of the structure here. Uh, and I'm going to speed this up so that we can really see how this progresses after the sun comes up. There's the center of circulation located right in there, really easy to see. And then this sort of comma shape to it, uh, large feeder band. Look at all the lightning flashes in there, so very active. And the wind field is very expansive as well, pushing a lot of water out ahead of it towards the Florida Peninsula, the Panhandle, and eventually the North Central Gulf Coast. Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, again, like I said, the Florida Panhandle, all going to have impacts from this, and we'll look at that and what those impacts could be in just a moment. But all in all, as we stop the last frame there, fairly well structured for June. I mean, seriously, climatology, if we go back and look at the past, you don't have a lot of June hurricanes. They're hard to get. And so structurally speaking, this is better defined than Barry was last year, better defined than Cindy was in uh, 2017, and Alberto in 2018, if you think of early season or almost season, <laughs> some of these were before the season, uh, storms, Cristobal here or Cristobal, whatever, is, you know, holding its own, you know, and at least it's not stronger. We can all be thankful for that. Anyway, let's move along. Where will it go from here strength-wise? Uh, I think it'll drop air pressure-wise a couple more millibars and probably go for the upper end of the guidance here. Wouldn't surprise me if Recon finds 60 or 70 knots at some point in one of these thunderstorms that's out here. And this is very important. So if Recon, you know, there's the center of circulation right there. So the Hurricane Hunter flies an alpha pattern through here, something like that, and samples the environment. They're not going to find very much in the way of strong winds in here. But if they fly around in here, however they do it, yes, that's where they're going to find stronger winds it won't surprise me when all is said and done, if we do see, this is in knots, 60, maybe 70 knots. If it briefly becomes a hurricane, 
because one of these stronger bands in here, especially as this gets closer to landfall up in southeast Louisiana and begins to tighten up, uh, I'm on record as saying I'm not going to be surprised, and I know that's hedging my bet, that this becomes a Category 1 hurricane if for only six to eight hours. That being said, that's a label that we put on there, right? You know, that's just a label. Had to, that was something was getting ready to fall off my desk there. I got a cup of water and the condensation on it was making it slide off this table. Um, that's what we label it. The effects are going to be the same. Now, if it was a 60 mile per hour tropical storm and it went to a 100 mile per hour hurricane, yes, that would be a pretty big difference. But a 60 knot tropical storm, which is about 70 miles per hour, versus a 70 knot, which is 80 miles per hour, not much difference overall that you can go out and go, wow, I noticed a difference there. I really did. Not quite. It's what you see in this overall large envelope of energy here that's headed towards the Gulf Coast that's going to cause the problems. And whether or not it becomes a hurricane is academic, almost literally, in terms of what you can expect. So overall, the guidance, a little bit more in the way of intensification, probable. Uh, but the main thing is that these impacts are already set into motion. Here's what the GFS from the 6Z run indicates. With the storm moving northward towards the Gulf Coast, kind of wobbling about, and the pressure gets down to about 991 there, tightens up. And, and the way the GFS depicts this, it does look like it tries to come together just a little bit more there. Again, that center kind of jumps around, kind of weird. Uh, and you see the rainfall. This is depicting previous rainfall amounts. And this extends all the way over some of these feeder bands into Florida. And the general onshore flow, you see these isobars right here? That's what these lines are. And generally the wind is going to follow those lines. And so the flow is out of the south, towards the north, piling up the water very efficiently here from Cedar Key all the way over to southeast Louisiana, the Mississippi Sound, Lake Bourne. There's not any storm surge watch or warning for Lake Pontchartrain, which is somewhat surprising to me. And we'll look at that in a moment as to what to expect. But this moves inland, and then watch what happens. This is overnight, tomorrow night into early Monday morning. This gets on up into Arkansas, huge flood potential, lots and lots of heavy rain, severe weather in the right front quadrant with any of these bands that form, especially in the late afternoon to early evening. The tornado threat's going to be there. And then that thing moves on up into uh, the Great Lakes region from there. I'll be talking about that over the coming days. So you guys, well inland, hundreds of miles from the coast. And look, this depicts it very well. That's the forecast rain swath inland. That's Iowa, all right? That's Wisconsin. And this could head up into that region, believe it or not. The bullseye of rainfall, though, down here along the Gulf Coast, centered on Mississippi and Louisiana, anywhere from 6 to 10 inches. That's a lot with isolated amounts of a foot. Peak surge, this is a very, very cool graphic, really easy to understand. I'm going to highlight it in blue, 3 to 5 feet from Ocean Springs over to the mouth of the Mississippi including Lake Bourne in here. That Highway 90 corridor, Waveland, Bay St. Louis, around to Gulfport. The typical areas, you know how the Mississippi Sound reacts when you have the piling of the water up into this region, and that's what we're going to get as the storm approaches. Over to the east from Ocean Springs to Indian Pass, one to three feet. So, And this is above ground level, by the way. Those are storm surge values above ground level. Not everybody will see that. You know, some people might see six feet. And some people might see a couple of inches where they're like, wow, that was nothing. But this is the general guidance. Over uh, in the Big Bend of Florida, two to four feet. That's fairly significant. St. Mark's over to Cedar Key. Other areas, Steenhatchee, I think that's how you say it. And then from, however you pronounce that town, down to Marco Island. What is that? Arapica? I'm probably just butchering it, um, one to three feet. So this is this is a huge area of real estate. And then over to Morgan City, two to four feet. But notice, 
the absence of any storm surge information, because I guess they're not too worried about it, for Lake Pontchartrain, which puzzles me. Mandeville being right in here, we have a live camera there now, with the track of Cristobal moving in this way, and the onshore flow piling in across like that, I would expect that there would be some surge along Lake Pontchartrain. I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. Just be be prepared for that if you live along Lakeshore Drive in that region. Uh, what else in terms of impacts? I wanted to go back to the uh, wind. We see rainfall. We got flash flooding. Uh, key messages, just real quick, just to give you an idea. Uh, storm surge, we've talked about that. Tropical storm force wind. Yeah, there might be some power outages here and there. And again, remember I talked about this on last night's update. You can go to weather.gov. You click on an area of the map that you're interested in, or you can put in your zip code or your location, like Gulfport, Mississippi. Click on it. You get to the landing page and read those red headlines right there. If it's in red, it's important. Read them. Flash flood watch, detailed information, hurricane local statement, the tropical storm warning and the storm surge warning. Click on any of these as an example, hurricane local statement. And it's lengthy, but what else do you have to do, right? <laughs> Read about it. Seriously, good information written by people at your local office. And in this case, that is the Slidell, Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana area, National Weather Service forecast office. All right, so the camera system's up and running. There's my vehicle cam sitting out of the parking lot of the hotel here in Gulfport. We've got one camera set up here. There's somebody driving by. Look how awesome that is. We'll be able to monitor this. This is what the crowdfunding from Patreon allows us to do. There's my mug. These are the membership levels. The cameras begin at the $10 level. And it's more than just the cameras. It's a community. You get access to our live chat and much, much more. In fact, you also, very important, again, it's not just the cameras, the original content that I produced, the entire season one podcast, Stories from the Hurricane Highway, any level on Patreon, a dollar to whatever, that's included. Kind of like Amazon Prime, included with Prime, right? All of my documentaries, all of them, the Tracking the Hurricanes series, that is available through Patreon. Everything going back to 2004, the 2018 documentary, and the brand new Hurricane Highway series that I'm producing. Three episodes ready. The fourth episode is going to drop tonight, Hurricane Dorian. It's actually called Episode 5 because Episode 4 is still in progress, but it's the fourth episode being available, if that makes sense. The fourth episode, episode four, is actually about the weather balloon project, and that will be ready later on in the month of June. But anyway, uh, Dorian, for all of you that are already a member or if you're thinking about signing up, the Dorian episode is going to be available tonight. I just finished it up before I left to come here. So that's what we do, and you get access to the cams. Like I said, I'm going to have other ones. Six total cameras plus the vehicle camera. We have our live chat here. People on here, Cecil, Tim, down in the U.S. Virgin Islands, JL, we'll let, when they put JL, we're not going to call people's names out, but you know who you are. Uh, all sorts of folks on here. This is Michael, you know him from YouTube, Ma, as we call him, Michael Hurd, and his wife are members. There's John. John's been a member for 15 years. I say member. It's almost like being a co-op. Anyway, I know I'm rambling about this, but that's what we do. That's what this crowdfunding, the strength in numbers, uh, allows me to do, and I get to work for you. All right, so hopefully you stay informed. That's my number one goal. And then I'll show you these cameras and the impacts and the weather stations. Nothing else like it anywhere on the net. We've been doing this for 15 years with these live cams that's come a long way, and I appreciate your supporting it. All right, so let me get out of here. I got some stuff I got to do, and then we got to go put up those cameras, right? Uh, follow along on the live YouTube feed. That will always be available absolutely free of charge. I appreciate all the help and uh, people helping me to get that thing running like we do. And uh, I'll see you from out there, around the Mississippi, Louisiana coasts, wherever. As always, thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. 
I'll see you from the vehicle as we travel around setting up the equipment. Greg will join me. We'll see you throughout the day.